Hello and welcome to Cuck and Curb's coding class. This is why I don't use JavaScript frameworks and why you might not need to either because everybody's always been telling me, oh, you should use React, you should use Vue, you should use Angular. Well, nobody actually has recommended me Angular and I just don't, I don't need it. So I don't use it. So first of all, these are the benefits of using a JavaScript framework. Built-in template engines, so you don't have to deal with using you know, a separate template engine. It's just all, you set a variable and then you can put it right into the HTML. Also, auto-updating DOM. So if you put that variable into the HTML, then if you change that variable during the runtime, that will be updated inside of the HTML without you having to manually go through and change it. Single page apps. So you load the whole app at once and then it's all loaded. You can click on everything and it's all just there it's a double-edged sword but whatever server-side rendering and this is how websites used to work back in the ancient times everything was server-side rendered with PHP and stuff but you have it put those variables into the HTML on the server side so that when you fetch it from your browser that's all there and a lot of websites do this built-in functions for less boilerplate basically you know there will be stuff that is built in that you can just do. You don't have to write code for that because it's already been done for you. Browser support supports ancient browsers back as far as you want without you having to write any other sort of special old browser code. You know, you can write your ES9 and it'll just convert it all to ES5 and you'll be fine. First, why you don't need a template engine? Because you can just use a template engine. You don't need one built in. Most of the time, you aren't constantly updating the DOM. There are exceptions, but most of the time, it's not really a big deal to manually add a line of code that refills the DOM whenever something is changed, because usually you're not changing stuff very often. Just one extra step, yeah. Why you don't need a single page app? Load speed. Single page apps are kind of bad for load speed, because it essentially means that the entire website is loaded in all at once so it takes a long time for it to be able to be responsive because the entire thing needs to be downloaded it decreases SEO because there's just one page and basically the secret trick that everyone uses for search engine optimization is to start a blog and just post a bunch of stuff on the blog because then what happens is the search engines see hundreds and hundreds of pages and so that basically is an automatic free booster to the top of Google. So an SPA does the opposite of this. It puts everything into one page, so you get less search engine optimization. Barely noticeable impact on usability. Again, sometimes this isn't the case. Sometimes it actually can help, but most of the time clicking on a link to a different page within a website adds like a split second, something you could barely notice to, you know, the time you're spending on it so the single page app might not even have a very significant benefit and you can get the best of both worlds with a library called pjax now i've never used it but basically what it does is it automatically makes your website work like an spa so when you click on a link rather than it loading the whole new page into your browser the way that normally works what it does instead is it fetches the resource and it injects it into the current page that you're on. So what you end up happening is having is slightly faster load speeds. Not really noticeably faster, but you don't have stuff like the navigation disappearing for a second while it loads in the other page. Because that all is handled by PJAX and it just, the navigation stays there. And it gets updated if it has to. That's nice and it does not use any prefetching so it has no impact on initial load speed and it also works with old browsers that don't support fetching and loading in those resources in the way that it does it by just letting the links work like normal so you know that helps too you don't need server-side rendering there are other methods for improving search engine optimization for example Cloudflare workers, which let you dynamically inject snippets. So, for example, I have Listener, right? My podcast app, right? And every single podcast page on Listener is identical. Like, the exact same response is returned by the server. And 
Then, once that page is loaded into your browser, it runs some JavaScript that fetches all the show details and stuff and fills in the page with the actual show. The problem this causes is that it's terrible for search engine optimization because every single page is identical. And it's also bad because like, if you text it to a friend, it won't say the name of the show like in the little preview and there won't be any meta tags that are specific to the show. All of that can be remedied using Cloudflare workers because you can just dynamically inject the snippet. So I have a worker set up, for example, on Listener. And Doge House does this too, by the way. Or did it, I guess it's dead, but with the room IDs. But what it does on Listener is I have a worker set up that fetches the show information for that specific show and it injects the HTML into like the meta tags and stuff into the HTML and then just returns the generic web page other than that. And, you know, then you don't have to worry about having a whole server. You can use serverless stuff. And then also, the boilerplate is not that bad. I mean, this is some code from a project I'm working on right now. And the majority of this code here is actually not even really boilerplate to use vanilla. I have like one function called safe to code that I've added in and everything else is just common to all the pages. Finally, browser support. Again, you can use a bundler which will basically take all your JavaScript which you can write in ES9 with async, await, and all that stuff and it'll just magically convert it into ES5 code that'll run on ancient browsers. Or, of course, if you don't want to use a bundler because, you know, bundlers are bloat or whatever, you can write ES5 code manually. Obviously, don't do this because then you would have to use jQuery. And jQuery is bad. Finally, there's polyfills. So, for example, GitHub has a fetch polyfill that they use so that it works on older browsers. And the nice thing about bundlers, actually, polyfills are good too, but the problem with them is that they are loaded into browsers even if they support the new features. But the nice thing about bundlers is that you can have your development environment using the latest thing and you just run it on the latest browser and then when you like push to the server or whatever it will run the bundler. You can have that set up, which is nice. Other downsides of JavaScript frameworks. Compile step. Of course, I know you can use JavaScript frameworks without a compile step. For example, React lets you write like plain HTML, but to get really the benefits of React, you have to use JSX. I mean, there's not really any point if you're not using JSX. So there's always a compile step which slows down hot reload. I'm a big fan of hot reload. I, I want it to be fast as possible. You know, if you're using a JavaScript framework that has to compile your entire website every time you make a change, your hot reload kind of becomes lukewarm reload which isn't good. I don't like that. Ridiculous amounts of dependencies. I mean, you got to run npm install or yarn install, and it just takes like 10 hours to download all your node modules. And like, come on, no need for that. And, and oftentimes, these, develop these dependencies that you don't even use end up being bundled into the website, which just decrease page load speed. That's large file size. That's because of the dependencies most of the time and they're confusing unless not all of them are confusing but like people hate on angular a lot because it's confusing exceptions this is when i would use a javascript framework when the dom needs to be filled with data constantly one such example would be a real-time app so maybe like a chat app or some kind of map tracker i don't know and the other one is oat clicker so the code to oat clicker is complete spaghetti. Please don't look at it. It's total trash. So if I ever make an update to oat clicker, which I don't think I'll do anytime soon, but it could happen. If I were to do that, I would completely rewrite the entire game from scratch. And in doing that, I would also use a JavaScript framework because it's constantly updating the DOM and there's like hundreds of lines that are literally just selecting random elements. I mean, if I had written it more smartly, those uh, there would be less of them. But still, a framework would clean that up even more. And I would use Svelte because I really like the way 
it acts you know it's basically like writing vanilla javascript it's just got those free that free built-in template engine then when you need complete server-side rendering so when cloudflare functions does not supplement server-side rendering this is very rare but i don't know maybe you have some use case for it and that's it that's why i don't use a javascript framework why you might not need to either and when you should use a javascript framework thanks for watching and this is actually part of a series called cuck me curb thursday <laughs> which is suggested to me by mox valix and other open suspect developers are doing their own day of the week videos so there's nice micro mondays there's two of them right now and there's best one crazy tuesdays and there is one of those right now and i'll put links to all that stuff in the description nice micro mondays are only on library and best one crazy tuesdays are only on peer tube this is going up on both youtube and library thanks for watching again and remember when you last ate